You see, it's not easy to be a father. Ah, it takes sacrifice. God bless you. You may have your seat. It's not easy to be what? One of the reasons why we have less men reporting mental health issues is because we try to be men. Yes, what a woman would just say, <coughs> and she gains attention to a man. If you do, <coughs> they'll say, are you okay? <laughs> so most of the time as a man, we will learn to manage our pain. You hardly see men cry out the way we men will. We cry in. We don't cry out. We cry in. And that is one of the reasons why you notice that it's like the lifespan of men is shorter. Because we are taught not to express everything. But in as much as we are taught not to express much of our feelings, we are being expected to what? To to impress those connecting to us or connected to us hallelujah Amen. as a father may the lord bless you you will enjoy Amen. long life Amen. you will see your children's children Amen. i thought the fathers would be louder than the Amen. you will not go into the grave early Amen. you will fulfill purpose Thank you, Jesus. and this generation and the next generation will not forget your name Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. Today I'm here to share a message with us titled, Let Them Leave. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, Let Them Leave. Let Them Leave. Oh, are you scared of your neighbor? Let Them Leave. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, Let Them Leave. Let Them Leave. Oh, Sister Kemi, God bless you. Your testimony is what I call uh, a fantascholastic. I, that is combining service between Fanta and Coco. Fanta Colastic. <laughs> God bless you. You know, I love that audacity. Yes. Until we come to the realization that the world was created for us, yes, we will remain as slaves to what was created. Mm. The reason why money is enslaving people is because we forget our place in the creation story. The earth was created for you, not you for the earth. If money is the reason why you can't sleep, then there is a problem with the order. Yes, sir. If money is the problem why you can't sleep well, there's a problem with the mentality of such an individual. Yes, sir. It is money that should be bothered that you are not spending it the way you should. Not you bothering about a job or money. There is a formula to excellence in the scriptures. And the formula is seek ye first the kingdom. From the day I knew the formula, I don't look for things, they look for me. It's as simple as that. If you are trying to change the order, it wouldn't work. It won't work for you. Put God first and you will be the first. Because Jesus says, so that where I am, there they may be also. If you put God first, you can never be second. Because Jesus said, wherever you put me, that is where I will bring you to join me. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, put God first. Put God first. Let them leave. Have you been abandoned before? Have you been abandoned before? If you have experienced that, let me see your hand. I'm, I'm lifting both my hands and my legs. Have you been abandoned before by the one you trusted? Ah. By those you thought will give their lives for you? Have you been abandoned by the one you loved and sacrificed for? We are created as a social and dependent being. But the danger with that is the type of association affects your divine acceleration being connected to the wrong persons the wrong group or association can terminate your true destiny yes sir whoever you connect your life or lives to you begin to draw their content into your container 
I am very, very careful with those I align with. Because if you align with someone who is going against where you are heading to, then stagnancy is not optional. It's a must. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. So have you been abandoned before? Pay attention to your association. For true friends will pitch their tents with you in truth. The wrong friends will abandon you anytime you want to manifest the truth. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. I grew up having friends. But over time, I noticed that some of them will be a stumbling block to my destiny. I had to lay them aside. The Bible says we should lay aside every weight that easily besets us. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, let them go. Let them go. And ask your neighbor, are you one of them? Are you one of them? Okay, that's a nice question. So pay attention to your association. For 1 Corinthians 15, 33, says what? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. It said, do not be deceived. Bad company does what? Corrupt good man. Corrupt what? Good man. No, Pastor, what do you don't understand? I'm very prayerful. I speak in tongues. I love God and I know Him. No, your company can corrupt your content. The people you are aligned with, you see, the people you are aligned with, they are a prophecy of your character. Yes, sir. I will be fearful of a prayer band leader that 99% of our friends are gossips. Be careful with a choir leader or a pastor that most of his alignments are people who break homes because your association is a prophecy of your character. If we are not seeing your character the way your friends is, it's because of time. Give it time, time will reveal the true nature. So it is better having God's cloud over you than the wrong crowd around you it is what better having god's word cloud over your head than the wrong crowd around you it's not in the volume of noise around a man it's in the value of statement from the man's life It's not in the volume of the words, but it's in the tangibility of that word. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray for you that your life will not be a noisy life without value. Amen. I pray that your life will be a life that will be full of testimony. Amen. If your amen is louder, I just pray for you. Amen. Lift your right and say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My life is not useless. My life, is not My life will not be wasted. Say, I will fulfill purpose and nations will remember me for good. Somebody shout amen to that. Amen. So it is better to have the cloud of God over you than the wrong crowd around you. Some blessings and lifting in life will never manifest until the wrong people leave you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Hear that well. Some blessings and lifting in life will never manifest until the wrong people leave you. They need to leave you for you to move into your next level. If they don't leave you, you will remain stagnant. You might have fasted, you prayed, and you said, Lord, change it. And God is saying, the change is with you. Your connection is a prediction of your contents. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people had faith during service, but the moment they got home and began mingling with their associates, their faith disappeared. 
And Bible says that we are a product of the way we think. As a man thinketh, so is he. Your thinking is what affects the value of your living. Your thinking is what affects what? The, value of the, your con life. the contents of your thought is what affects the value of your living. So some, for you to move to the next level, some people need to leave you. <laughs> you see, let me bring you home. In Genesis 2 verse 24, let's see that scripture together. I want to show you how important it is that some people leave you for your next level. Genesis 2 24 says, For this reason, a man shall what? Leave. <laughs> For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife and they shall become what? One. Listen, child of God. If you do not leave, you are, you are not one flesh yet. Yes, sir. For you to have a home, leave the home where you were born. If you like marry a wife and bring it to your family, you are in trouble. Oh no, Pastor, my mother is prayer band leader in our church. My sister is prayer, prayer secretary in our, wherever she is. Excuse me. It is an order for elevation. For the joining to be permanent, the, most, the living must be applied. You must apply the living. And that's why if you are too emotionally connected to the family where you are from, your emotions in your current family will be thwarted. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. For you to create a home, leave that home. Is pastor advocating that you should cut away, cut ties from your parents and the rest? No. But this is what I'm saying. To live means what? To disconnect. Physically. And also disconnect. Financially. You see, let's not mix this up. You can be disconnected physically from your family. But you still support them. Let them see you as center link. They shouldn't see you as the link. <laughs> Do you understand? Am I confusing us? They should know that if money comes from Uncle James, it's a support. It's not a bad right. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the reasons why I've lost some men friend is because of my advocacy for a God-fearing home. They begin to think, maybe it's advocating too much for women. No, no. It's common sense. When you marry, she becomes one flesh with you. If you will take the opinions of outsiders before the one inside, then your home will soon break into two. And you start living outside. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us come back. So even in marriage, as a man, I need to leave. As a woman, I need to leave. If you don't leave, you can't cleave. If you look at this verse, we have the A and the B part. He said, for this reason shall a man do what leave his father and his mother and where you live now you can be joined where you live now you can become but if you refuse living you cannot be joined or become i pray that you will leave those you must leave and connect with those you should be connected to Amen. in this season of celebration and elevation i pray for you that you will not be excluded amen if your amen is louder i pray for you just amen. now amen three reasons why they will leave or abandon a child of god three reasons why 
they will leave or abandon you and I. Number one, you can be hated and abandoned the moment you decide to identify and declare your person and purpose. I say that again. Number one, you can be hated and abandoned the moment you decide to identify and declare your person and your purpose. Let's see John chapter 6, verse 58. I'll read from verse 58. Quickly down to 69. John chapter 6, verse 50, 58. You can be hated and abandoned the moment you decide to what? Identify and declare your person and purpose. I read. It says, this is, this is Jesus speaking. It said, this is the bread which came down out of heaven. It is not like what? The manner that our fathers, what? Ate. And they what? Eventually died. The one who eats this bread believes what? In me. Accepts me as a savior. Will what? Will live forever. Go to the next verse, please. Go to the next verse. He said these things in a synagogue in a church while he was teaching in Capernaum. The next verse. When many of who? Outsiders? His neighbors? Many of who? <laughs> when many of his? That means these are people that Based on expectations, they should know him. They willingly began to follow him. They willingly became his disciples. But many of his disciples heard this. They said, this is difficult and harsh. And what? Offensive what? Oh. <laughs> they were cool with Jesus. As long as he will not mention his true purpose in same vein some of us will have friends that the moment you you speak of the bible they say no 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 stop stop stop, stop, stop. we are not in church when you try to advise they say so we no 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 we, we are not church people from the day you stop attending that meeting, you told them, I have a church activity. They say, oh, we know you church person. Go, go, go. They don't want to know. You see, there is what I call the crowd syndrome. The crowd syndrome speaks of human beings who constitute as a blockage to seasons when we decide to rise and shine they are around you not for you but to keep you where they met you watch out watch the crowd the woman with the issue of blood had an emergency she she her service was tried she needed a healer jesus was the healer in the city you see she was bleeding to the point that people knew she was bleeding people forgot her name and they knew her with a medical condition she was called the woman with the issue of blood but she needed to press through the crowd to connect with the healer the crowd became a barrier to a miracle, but she pushed through. But let us look on the other side. When a woman was caught in the very act of adultery, the crowd took her to the front seats where Jesus was to be stoned and to be punished. Can you see the crowd? The one that needed healing was prevented the one the crowd wants dead they took her to the front i pray for you 
Every crowd around your life, your relationship, your health, your finance, waiting to truncate your divine acceleration to lifting in the name of Jesus. They scatter for your sake. Amen. I say they scatter for your sake. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, you will fulfill your purpose. Amen. So the Bible says that many of them felt it was an offensive statement. They said, who can be what? To listen to what? Who wants to listen to this? I went to JPPM and the pastor was preaching like he's full of pride. Who will listen to this? I went to the church. Everyone were dancing as if they were in the club. Who will watch this? <laughs> Excuse me. We are so elevated to the platform of celebration and so accelerated to the place of jubilation that no circumstance can stop us because we know who we are. Yes, we are too blessed to be stressed, yes, too what? Lifted to be limited, too anointed to be distracted. Ah, the apple of God's eye, God's bomboy. Hallelujah! Amen. I say hallelujah! Amen. If you are part of this kingdom, shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let's see the next verse. It was his disciples that started complaining. Be careful of those who are around you. Some are around you to support you. Yes, sir. Others are around you to suck you dry. Mm. The moment they take the last sip, and they notice that there's no more blood in your vein. Instead, they are getting uh, 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 sh sugary drinks, Fanta and Coke. They relocate. I pray for you again. I receive it. Can I tell you this? Yes, sir. The devil is not the most dangerous. The most dangerous entity around you is the one you do not expect is around you to destroy you. At least the devil, you know, is the devil. When he comes around, you say, I know you are the devil. <laughs> I know you are here for no good. But when the one that tells you, lay your head here, I say, thank God he has a broad shoulder and you lay that head. Then what follows is a big bang. Boom! That is the most dangerous person. The devil takes advantage of emotional connections. Because he knows that the motion of man in this world is connected to his emotion. And that's why whatever affects your emotion begins to manifest in your flesh. It broke my heart. It wasn't your heart. Nothing touched your heart. It was your soul. Hallelujah. Then verse 61 says, But Jesus, aware. Are you seeing that? Jesus was aware. He knew. Know those around you. Know who? Know who? You know, sometimes you say, Pastor, why do you want us to repeat it? You, when you repeat it, it's registering in your memory. Know those around. Because even Jesus knew. Say, but Jesus aware that his disciples were complaining about it. Ask them, does this cause you to stumble? And take what? Offers. The next verse. <laughs> the next verse, please. What then will you think if you see the Son of Man ascending to where? The realm where he, he was before. The next verse, please. It is the Spirit who gives a life. The flesh conveys no benefit. It is of no account. The words I have spoken to you are what? Spirit and life. Providing eternal life. The next verse, please. But still, there are some of you who do not believe and have faith. For Jesus knew what? From the beginning, who did not believe and who would betray him? Know those around you. you. Mm. Not them, no them. To know is a product of studying and observation. Know those around you. Brother Tender, I can't do without you. I will die without you. Let us see. Know those around you. No, you can't hurt.
caught a fly. Let us see. Give it time. It may be killing elephant. Hallelujah. Jesus knew from the beginning. I think in engineering they say safety first. Safety word first. Jesus knew from. Don't wait until it happens before you say, oh, I taught. Taught it now so that you won't think it then. Hallelujah. Taught it when? Taught it now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you the one to betray me? Look at that neighbor very well. Say, neighbor, don't stop bowing your head. Look at me. Are you the one to betray me? Hallelujah. You may be wondering, Pastor, why you are lying on stock? Speak like this in church. This is the reason. Some confrontation can bring about deliverance. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan desire to save you. But I'll pray for you. So sometimes you need to look at those around there and ask them, are you the one to betray me? So that if the, if the devil is already helping them to nurse that imagination, the grace of God will delete it. Hallelujah. Let us continue. So he knew those that will betray him. The next verse. <laughs> and he was saying, this is the reason why I have told you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him. That is unless he is enabled to do so by what? Watch this. I want to, the preachers watching me, watch this. The reason why it's wrong for pastors to say my member left, my member went to that church because you don't have any member. Yes, sir. In this church, we don't have members. Everybody is a minister. We are members of the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this. Jesus knew. He said, for as many giving unto me. If you, you see, there are some JPP members that have remained to you tomorrow since we started here now. It's because God gave them to this ministry. I don't run after people who leave. Because if you are for JPP, you will cleave. If you can't connect, go to where you can connect. Hallelujah. Because it is where you connect, that is where you collect from. Yes, sir. That's why I have this confidence because I read the scriptures years ago. Jesus said, For as many give in, they stay. Don't barbecue cannot keep a member in church. Do barbecue, do love feast, do feast of love, do love of feast and feast. It will keep a human being. It is God that will keep. Except the Lord build a house. Are you aware that there are some people that are still coming to this ministry? In the next two years, you will see the crowd that will come here. Because they are giving. I have seen it. So that's why I don't shake when somebody says, Oh, I'm taking my back. Take your back and go. It may be for your good. If you are called, you just click. You see, Jesus' mindset, he knew. Watch this. Let's continue the scripture. As a result of this, many, many of his what? You see, many of his neighbors, his enemies, his foes, his, uh, many of what? What did they do? Hey, say abandon him. Abandon him. Hey, hey oh, Jesus was abandoned. <laughs> Why wouldn't they abandon a pastor, a common pastor, and a common apostle, and a common prophet? Hey, oh, Jesus. Miracle worker. He walked on the water. He changed water to wine. He was abandoned. should not have high blood pressure when members leave because if they learn Jesus they will leave you let them go God bless you let them leave who left him disciples some of them were in the choir some of them were ushers 
they were in the media they were in the children's environment they said excuse me sir as long as you keep preaching like this i will abandon you my dear you are not the first it happened to jesus let them leave because you are about moving to your next level watch this if they stay with you they will corrupt your next level yes sir hey if they say they will corrupt your next level yes sir because they meet you on that spot they think your destiny is all around that spot oh. they think your tomorrow is about that spot they don't know that you just like sport activities you are warming up to fly let them live also because you need men with correct mindset to connect with you in that correct place yes sir somebody shall fire fire them leave they are back you know you know what I, I, they are back look, look at the world let us do a let us do a, a bit uh, let's try to be schematics or whatever see abandon i said i will abandon i'm done with you I bind you and I'm done with you. If Jesus had books, some of them would set the books on fire. Why did they abandon Jesus? Because he said, I am. Some people will begin to fight you the moment you realize yourself, your true nature in God, they will become angry with you hallelujah amen they don't want you to speak about yourself they don't they don't want you to say i feel god is saying this will qualify you to hear from god is it no you susanna susanna you that was fed from one man's house to the other in Perth. is it not susanna susanna god is speaking to us susanna I want to say this be careful with your community one of the reasons why a community should exist is for lifting if the community have lost its ability to lift members they should scatter communities to lift celebrate people and correct the ones that see nothing in themselves tell them they can do something that is a community so if you if your community is not lifting it's only finding fault oh this one is wearing glasses every time you wearing why are you wearing glasses you you are wearing jean top why are you wearing jean top if that is the purpose they have lost vision and where there is no vision the people perish hallelujah they abandon Jesus. Remember this scripture when your friends leave you. Remember this scripture when your parents abandon you. They abandon Jesus first. Jesus says, if any man wants to follow me, he should first of all carry his cross. The problem with the church sometimes is that we don't want the cross, but we want the glory. Mm. We don't want the cross, we want the glory. We want everyone to speak well of us. We don't want to offend anyone. That's why we're offending our destiny. Bible says, curse is the man that everyone speaks good of. You are a cursed person. In destiny, you must offend some people. Without apologies. Because you know what God deposited in you. And the moment you are trying to announce it, they say, shut up. Brother Emmanuel now is speaking in tongues. How, 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 how can he be? How can we be speaking in tongues and he's speaking in tongues? You see the problem? Let them leave. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. If you are one of them, one of them you can leave. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I know some people are tired of their neighbor already. 
you feel like if i can just change my seat now <laughs> hallelujah so the number one like i said is that you can be hated and abandoned the moment you decide to identify and declare your person and purpose it was the day you said oh they proposed to me that was the day that your cc your friend cc cc no more pick your calls cc let's go for shopping no i have headache cc what is happening to us we used to be best friends from primary school so see now it, our attitude is changed from the day you showed your ring like this it go pepper them sister yvette sister yvette do your hand again like that it go pepper them she called me she said papa i felt like i just feel like crying right now i'm in my car i said what happened he said another pay rise but he did tell me of the proposal So the, the proposal was a shock. You know one thing I love about her? I remember when she stood on this pulpit and she said I was a drug addict. That's why I say God publicly is blessed. This you are 20 what? You are 22. You she she already bought her property, this girl. And her fiance. Because she's very open. She stood there. Some of us will say, well, you know, I was a sinner, now I'm a believer. She stood here. She said, I was a drug addict. And you heard that this morning. She said, just nine months. Nine months, a lot changed. She's now born again. She has her property. She's been second pay rise within two or three weeks. Two, three weeks. She's engaged. She engaged yesterday. She's the manager. Can you see? These were things she could not become as an unbeliever. But nine months after being born again, hey, that is why I call total package. Somebody shout glory! Glory! That's why I tell people, do not be ashamed of your story. Because when people hear that from nobody to somebody, they will appreciate where you are now. Greatness is a product of gradual accumulation of testimonies. Don't be ashamed of your little beginnings. I was not born, born again. I was a sinner. Hallelujah. And that is where I pride myself. That I was once a sinner, now I'm a Christian. Don't be ashamed of who you used to be. So that God can say she declared publicly in the sense, the, the body of Christ. I will publicly surprise her and announce her. Now she's been announced in her place of work. She's announced in her family. She's announced in JPPM and she's announced globally. I pray for you. May the Lord lift you beyond your expectation. In the name of Jesus Christ. So they abandoned Jesus. So they will abandon you as well. For Jesus knew them from the beginning. So some people want you to be and remain the person they thought and perceived and heard you are. They want you to stay there. Your name was CC. They want you to remain CC. You were at this level. They want you to stay there. Please disconnect from such people quickly. Amen. Some people pick offense when I preach because instead of them repenting, they take me as their enemy. Change before it's too late. Life is on a time clock. When the heart stops beating, forget all you have and who, who you, you've always been. You are gone. Change now. I don't know my last day until the Lord speaks to me. But I need to be prepared always. I'm not scared of death. Because I know the day I close my eyes, I'm not dead, I'm sleeping. I wake up on the other side. How prepared are you? 
some people you say the lord is is i'm trying to go back but god is telling me some people here your downfall is your association you don't want to leave them pastor is preaching preaching you are still there you are endangering your destiny selling your glory for a morsel of bread is the value you place on yourself that is the value people will be aware of have you walked to sports shed and you are arguing no i can't buy orange two dollars no 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 five give me five cents five cents this, those bouncers or security will just lift you with your five cents and take you to your car hallelujah those groceries is a lesson to us put a, a tag on your life if not anyone can prize you you see somebody that is walking backwards say hello girl what's up someone okay hello girl what's up everybody can prize you because there's no price on your life put value on your self some people are not saying because they don't they are looking for the price tag they don't even know where it is put value on your yeah. <laughs> hallelujah amen so they hate your confidence in who God says you are. In Psalm 139 verse 14 to 16, it says what? That you are fearfully and wonderfully made. They hate it if you say that. Or is it in 1 Peter 2, 9? When you declare, say, I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. You are the get offended. They say, what do you mean? You, we saw you smoking last week. You say i am a holy nation and when you say i am the apple of god's eyes in zechariah chapter 2 verse 8 they say shut up when did you start reading the bible because they want you to remain the way they met you and then this is the one that provokes them the most when you quote chronicles 16 22 and you tell them touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm they say what anointed so you now have anointed you say yes i am god's anointed i am god's what anointed i am god's anointed so do not allow the facial expression of your of the people around you to discourage your acceleration in life declare who you are stand boldly and celebrate i tell the use of jbpm celebrate who you are let your classmates know you are born again tongue speaking holy ghost for you child of god let them know let them know when you go for a school bus ride and you sit on your seat while all they are listening to whatever they are listening to or making their noise you are they say what language is we say is the holy ghost language you can't understand it except you give your life to jesus hallelujah that amen is looking for something else amen I say this because when I was in, in my year nine in school, I was a crazy Holy Ghost baby boy. It, it drew their, you see, it came to the attention of my school principal that there is a boy that behaves like an adult. I will pray for the school assembly. One time, my teachers started coming to the school fellowship. I laid hand on my teachers. I was wearing my short pants. I was a junior student. I laid hand on them. One of my teachers was going under the anointing like this. Life, you have one life to live, live it well. I know the fear face. I see the face of God. I sought his face. I've seen his face. He's, I fear God alone. Hallelujah. Amen. Come out of your shell and shine. Come out of what? Your shell and shine. Don't you are in the church, you are dancing like you are in the freezer. You are in your father's house. You are dancing like you are in the jailhouse. I don't know where this posh came out of. Mm. This effigy and whatever cockiness. We are worshiping God. Some people sit like this. Have you seen God? If you see God, you will faint. Bible says even mountains. <laughs> At the sound of his voice mountains begins to run and that is the god we 
are worshiping and dancing. And you are like, May God forgive you. Even your guardian angel is embarrassed. Whatever you are and wherever you are, it is by the grace of God. Yes, sir. God bless you. I've spoken to professors, PhD holders. If not God, that your brain, see, just a little, a little nerve that will shift, you begin to talk upside down. That's why no matter. I was to do my PhD ECU. No matter the level of degree I get, if I am in God's house, I can roll on the floor. If you are offended, don't be offended. For, don't be mind your business. It's my father's house. Life is too short. Celebrate it. When Sister Doris is coming up, I will dance. If you are angry, stay at the reception. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we fighting? No. I say hallelujah. Amen. So I pray, you know, when you wake up in the morning, thank you, Jesus. This day is going to be a beautiful day. Let your children be surprised, shocked. Mommy, are you okay? Say yes. The joy of the Lord is my strength, baby. Hallelujah. Amen. Celebrate life. Stop waking up like you regretted waking up. I need to give us this quickly so that we can do Thanksgiving. Number two, you can be hated and abandoned because you are a dreamer. You can be hated and abandoned because you are what? Ask your neighbor, are you a dreamer? Are you a dreamer? If you are a dreamer, they won't like you. Sister Precious, what are you? Another one, another job. Relax. Another house. Relax. If you are a dreamer, they will hate you. You ask your neighbor, are you a dreamer? Are you a dreamer? It is dangerous for dreamers to be friends with non-dreamers. It is what? Very dangerous. Dangerous for dreamers to be friends with non dreamers. Non-dreamers. Because dreams are like coals of fire that the right person and environment will keep fanning. But the wrong association and wrong environment we either let the fire in the coal to go out or put out the fire themselves. Dreamers are progressive and passionate people. Sometimes if your family does not know or care that you are a dreamer, they become your first or number one enemy. And that's why in Matthew 10, 36 says, A man's enemy are members of his household. Members of his household. An example is in Genesis 37, verse 5, and then verse 18 to 20. It says, Joseph's brothers hated, they hated him. And they abandoned him in the hands of the Egyptians, merchants. So in that Genesis 37 verse 5 says, One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him the more. Dreamers, if you are a dreamer, they will not like you. And the moment he told his brothers his dreams, they hated him the more. And verse 18 to, to, to 20 says, When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him where in the distance as he approached. They made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these settings. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we will see what becomes of his so if you are a dreamer, they will hate you. If you are innovative, they will hate you. They will tell you, are you the only housewife that wants to acquire the old degree in this world? Can't you just be a normal woman? Tell them I am abnormal. Because I carry the Holy Ghost, I can't be normal. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I can't be normal. Oh, the world likes normal people. I was praying for someone, uh, uh, was it on Thursday, and the demon manifested. The demon was like, why did they come to this church? 
I thought when they were coming from Africa, because it's a demon that has been in the family. He said, I thought they are going to a, a country, a land where they just enjoyment, enjoyment. But now they've come to a church that say, fire, 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 fire. What kind of a church is this? I don't want them in this church. Why? Because they want you to be normal. They want you to pray like, you know, toast and uh, egg and uh, coffee. Hallelujah. You see, no matter how I try to speak like Aussie, I can't speak like them. Because I have experience. I have background where I came from. If there is one thing I know and I know well, is that there is a spirit realm. Yes, sir. I know it well. From when I was a little boy, I used to get visitors from the other side. So when you see me look like this, I don't care if you like be a posh person. If you not accept the gospel, you don't need to accept me. If you hate Jesus, you don't need to like me. I don't, I'm not looking for friends. Jesus is enough for me. Because one lie that exists in this world is that anything about spiritual is not real. I, when I was a little boy, dwarfs, they were not dwarfs, they were midgets. They used to come outside from the other world to where I was on my bed. My family didn't know. They didn't know anything about it. I speak, I'm on live on Facebook. That's why, that's why you come, you, oh, you know, according to, to, to the analysis of our scientific uh, 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 injunction, you know, based on the, my dear, calm down, calm down. What you are reading is book. We will enter where the books come from. Amen. Hallelujah. What you are reading is book, es es eschatology and, the, and the, the, the analysis of the anthropological me metamorphosis of the synchronous. Keep your grammar. If you don't have Holy Ghost, you are just talking rubbish. Hallelujah. You see, you can have a PhD. If you are not born again, PhD will affect you. You know, there are types of PhD. This one is pull him down. Yes. Hallelujah. It is stupidity not to accept Jesus because you think you are too schooled. That school you went to, before you went to that school, people went to that school. And they died knowing Jesus. You gather books, you think you've arrived when you are just starting. Hallelujah. Some people pride, this is the reason why they are not born again. They come to church, they raise their nose. Who are you raising the nose for? Baba said, lift your hands, don't lift your nose. You are raising your nose. Like everybody is thinking, because of what? They gave you a, a, they put something on a gown on you. That is not as big as Mahagbada. They put a gown on you. And because of that, you are cocky. And you know, don't you know, address me as doctor. You see, this is the problem of the African community. You may not like me, watch me, I will tell you. I have one life to live, I answer to God alone. Watch this. The problem with the African community is that an African medical doctor will come for a wedding ceremony and she wants them to write his name as Dr. Michael Matundo. Excuse me, sir, where are we? Wedding. One thing I understand with the Caucasians is that if a doctor comes to your bedside in the hospital, he will tell you, I am a doctor. You see, the value of your title is tied to the environment where it came from. Why should I be introducing you as a doctor at a wedding? What do I need it for? What do the people need it for? If you are the doctor on duty, the one in charge of emergency, we can introduce and say, this is Dr. This. In case you need the fibrillator, you need S. How do they call it? Resuscitation. Consult him. But African, they want you to mention all the things they graduated with, like you do anybody good. Mm -hmm. And when you don't mention it, you become their enemy. Tell the MC to add Dr. The only surgeon. Why, why, why are you telling us you are a surgeon at a burial ceremony? Do you want to, do you want to re resurrect the dead person? <laughs> that is a problem. We carry tied to a new, and we're using it to scatter our, our relationship. If you come for my wedding, let's say I'm not married, you are a medical doctor, engineer, keep it in your office. 
And if I announce you as engineer at the wedding, who are you going to engineer in my wedding? They say if the seat break now, you will you will weld it. That's the problem with Africa. Say no, I don't like. Can you just call me Mr. James? At that wedding, you are nothing but Mr. James. We can't be calling you engineer. What are you engineering? Engineer, doctor, right? Then the person say, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I against statues? No. But I have learned from experience. We are in Australia, isn't it? You see, if, if somebody is coming to attend to you, say, I am. It's because he has a job to do. Not at the moment you enter the hospital, everybody, they, someone will come and, you, you, are, you are waiting for a doctor, someone will come and meet you. I am Dr. James. You are not seeing me today, but I just want you to know that I am Dr. James. Then someone will come and say, I, I am not this. I'm not EM, I'm RN. RN. Do, do you understand? Are, are you reasoning with me? I don't need to know every doctor in the hospital. The one that will attend to me will introduce his or herself, I am doctor. The reason is to build your confidence that you are in a safe hand. But Africa will take it to burial ceremony, wedding ceremony, naming ceremony where the baby doesn't even know the difference between the food the baby eats. They are introducing you in a naming ceremony. Doctor, engineer, right, Reverend Bishop. What are you big shopping? Hallelujah. Even me, I'm good with my name, Isaiah. Call me Isaiah. I'm okay with that. Don't need to call me Papa. Call me Isaiah, it's okay. But that twist is becoming time at eating people's life. Let's disconnect so that we can have sense. That's why I see people like Bill Gates and uh, all these people. You see, they're very simple. Imagine it's one of us that is Bill Gates. You will see the person who have a shirt is written at the back, Big Bill Gates. Bill Gates. If you don't greet you, I say, check my back. Do you know why you are talking to? <laughs> Keep your tattoo. In your, your tattoo is relevant in your place of work. Thank God your name is more powerful than your title. Your title you acquired, your name you, it was given to you when you were born. Value your name. Because Bible says that those that they were, their names were not written in the book of life. We are thrown into lake of fire. So when you die, your title ends here. Your certificate, if your family, they are very uh, 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 nice, you know, they are good. They just want you to go with what you came with. They will just bury you with the certificates and all your frame and some of your expensive shoes, they will take it. Your car, that your car, they don't allow children to play around it, they will take it. They don't allow your babies to eat biscuit there. You say, no, 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 no. Eat the biscuit outside. Hallelujah. So, I will round up so that we can go. Number three and the last. You can be hated and abandoned because God gave you a second chance to life and purpose. You can be hated and abandoned because God gave you a second chance chance to life and to per and purpose like the woman caught in the very act of adultery in uh, John chapter 8 verse 7 to 12 they brought her to be killed but Jesus liberated her from death and the people became discouraged they dropped their stones they were not happy that she was given a second chance to life and they all left and thank god for jesus jesus said daughter do anyone condemn you she looked around and said no they said neither do i go and see no more no more hallelujah Amen. so some people don't like it they used to know you as the bad boy in town but now you are now the preacher in town they don't they, are, they will not even come to your church yes, sir. they said we used to do do deals together with that guy we used to sell cocaine and we used to take eyes together how can he be preaching to me let them leave hallelujah some people they are idea that you are now a christian they don't like it 
that you are now a member of a group in church that don't like it. They want you to remain the sinner they used to know. They want you to remain the alcoholic they used to know. They want you to remain the druggie they used to know. They want you to remain the, 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 the sad lady they used to know. But our God is a God of a second chance. And if you are here and you know that you need to realign with God today, there is an opportunity for you to realign with God. Just like in Luke 15, 13, the prodigal son says, he says, I go back to my father. Remember that when he went to a faraway uh, a country, he had companies who helped him to spend the wealth he came with. But the moment he said, I'll go to my father, there was no escort back to his father. Nobody wants your rising. Nobody wants your lifting. Nobody wants your success. Nobody wants you to try again. You tried the business the first time, it, the, the business, nothing good came out. And you are trying the second time, they are discussing, don't do business again. Relax, stay where you are. Excuse me, you know, in business is what we call risk. You know, risk factors. You need to take risk. You see, you see, put in, it, it, it's, it's more stressful not to, to, to try again than when you try again. Do you understand that? Don't give up on yourself. Move up instead. Hallelujah. Amen. So remember this as you go back today into the week. You will be abandoned for these reasons. Number one, as a child of God for these reasons, number one, you can be hated or abandoned the moment you decide to identify and declare your person and purpose. And number two is what? You can be hated and abandoned because of what? You are a dreamer. And number three is what? And abandoned because God gave you a second chance to life and to our God is a God of a second chance. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise, please? Shall we all rise, please? You took my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, Lord. You took my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh.
that Lord I need a second chance you discarded your dreams and your drive to life because you felt rejected and abandoned you 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 began to fall and your 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 self-esteem is not degrading you know that you've left the path that God placed before you because of what people said and because of what friends may say you want me to pray with you you need rejuvenation you need restoration you need healing in your body you need a miracle wherever you are move forward come forward come forward come forward i want to pray with you now i want to pray with you now you have shown me mercy there are five people here. The Lord said you have. You've made decisions that have affected your work with Him negatively. But He said, I'm the God of a second chance. I can restore. I can rebuild, I can heal, I can restructure your life again. Wherever you are, can you just, those of you standing at the front, can you just lift your hand as a symbol of surrendering to the Lord? As, let's take this song before I pray. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. Oh, to Him. I 
command restoration. Let your prayer life be restored. Let your Bible study life be restored. Let your health be restored. Let your relationship be restored. I pray for you that no weapon formed against you as what shall prosper. And every tongue that has risen and arise against you in judgment, I condemn. I decree, declare you are untouchable, you are unbreakable, you are unmovable. And I prophesy that in this wonderful month of September, you are remembered for celebration. Thank you, excellent Father. In Jesus' name I pray. I will quickly invite Mama.